When Matthew Walker heard the government was mandating virtual learning after the holiday break, he wasn't surprised. It was a mix of deja vu and complete and total horror because um, I had low expectations uh, for this government, but they were truly blown out of the water when I saw them return to a learning model that um, just over uh, the last school closure had caused um, uh, uh, the youth suicide rate among uh, uh, the youth to triple uh, during the last school closure. They returned to that model instead of doing what they needed to throughout the Christmas break to keep schools safe. It's not like it's an imp impossibility. Um, I was particularly offended because of the way that it was waved off, said, I know this will be an inconvenience to some. Uh, it certainly is not an inconvenience to the now 17% of Canadian youth that have considered suicide throughout the pandemic. Um, it is not, a, is not a, an inconvenience to those who have gotten back into drugs, alcohol, or other addictions uh, are in domestic abuse situations within their homes. It's, it's truly, so I was really shocked that this government did not have the foresight to see students are suffering right now and you're double downing on it instead of protecting them while in school. In the Google Meet he hosted during the walkout today, students shared that they resoundingly reject online learning. They very bravely uh, kind of um, shared their own personal experiences and said it's made them feel isolated, made them feel depressed. Uh, many of them have had to reach out to mental health professionals throughout the pandemic um, and throughout school closures. And um, it's, it's been really affecting them and they want to get back to, to in-person classes as soon as possible. And they want to be able to feel safe doing so. And we talked about how to make that happen. Most of what students said was better enforcement of wearing masks, particularly while students are eating, um, better enforcement of social distancing, um, uh, better masking. So giving students the same N95 masks that teachers have gotten and um, ensuring that uh, you know, students are, are doing what they need to in terms of wearing their masks and, and staying safe. Unlike teachers, students don't have a union to speak for them. We don't have uh, seats in the provincial parliament. Uh, we have very little representation and we have felt it utterly, utterly unrepresented throughout this pandemic. Um, when I'm speaking to students, one of the biggest emotions they said that they've felt throughout this is helpless. They felt like they have not had the resources that they've needed to be able to speak out. And so I did this for two main reasons to organize this walkout. The first one would be um, to help give students the resources that we need because they are not getting them from our schools, from the provincial government or from anybody else, particularly mental health resources. I shared the suicide prevention hotline. I shared a whole bunch of other hotlines, Kids Help Phone, Rocks, all those other different uh, resources, but also resources for them to speak out. Students have felt like they are, have not had the ability to speak out throughout this entire pandemic. Um, and that has just been exemplified by this recent lockdown without any kind of student consultation whatsoever. And so the second reason I organized this was to allow students and to kind of rally them together to send a message to this provincial government that we are not expendable. We cannot be used as punching bags any longer. We are not uh, an afterthought. We should be the forethought. And um, also that schools is an essential service as essential as grocery stores or hospitals. And we should be getting back to in-person learning because it is what we need to do and because students are suffering. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.